everybody and thank you for joining us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. I'm your host Leon Gordon and we're back for what we hope will be another fantastic session to come together and learn more about Power BI as a community. I'm here with my co-host Pragati Jane. Hey everyone, hope everyone had a nice day and geared up for some new learning today. Definitely and how's your week been so far Pragati? It was pretty busy but yeah, finished a few things so yeah, day's gone well. <laughs> Excellent, I hope excellent. I hope same was with you, Leon. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Every every day, every day is amazing and busy. Um, so it's always good to take some time out and join the community, yeah. especially with sessions uh, like we have today. So yes. uh, we are going to end on the hour today. Uh, so myself and Pragati unfortunately have other commitments as well outside of today's session. So let's get go ahead and get started and introduce our session and our speaker. So today we're going to be taking a look to find out what's really going on in your tenant with the Power BI scale. Scanner API with Denis Selimovic. Yes, we got it right after we discussed it backstage. So as a user from the very beginning, Dennis is passionate about Power BI and everything related to it. In his blog, whatthefact.bi, he writes about the latest developments in Power BI and provides tips and tricks on the subject. Besides being a Power BI enthusiast, blog author, uh, speaker, and principal consultant, he is also the co-organizer of the meetup Power BI UK User Group Switzerland, where Pragati will be joining them in two weeks' time, a uh, little plug, um, and the Power BI meetup Basel, uh, the Data Bash conference, and a super user in the Microsoft Power BI community as well. So without any further ado, Dennis, welcome on board. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Leon, and thank you for the introduction. No problem at all. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today and uh, really excited for today's session. Me too. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Let me go ahead and get this, get your screen on the stream and we will let you begin your session. Thank you very much. Um, today we will talk a little bit about uh, uh, Power BI Scanner API. I know it's a topic where there is not so much information available, so hopefully uh, I can uh, show you something new or something uh, you didn't know yet. Um, at the beginning, I also have a small introduction. Then we will talk about what exactly is this Scanner API, um, how to set it up in a productive environment, and what are the advantages of the Scanner API. So the agenda is kind of uh, minimalistic, um, but I hope the content is not. Um, I mean, Leon said already most of it. I will still do a quick introduction myself. Uh, I'm Dennis Elimovic. I'm a principal consultant in Switzerland. Uh, I was Power BI user since the beginning in 2015. Uh, two months after Power BI was released, I had a project uh, where I had to work with Power BI. And as Leon already announced, I'm the co-organizing of the Power BI user group Switzerland. And if you have time, in two weeks, we have Pragati as a speaker. Um, in the Power BI community, I'm also a super user. And a while ago, I started with my blog, uh, What the Fact BI. But let's switch to today's topic. And that is what exactly is the Power BI Scanner API. Um, in general, the Scanner API is a a scanner for the Power BI tenant that provides really detailed uh, level of insights. Um, it scans the meta uh, metadata, so we get information really into a fine granularity. We get information about the tables, columns, down to the measures, DAX expressions, uh, M queries, uh, Power BI uh, assets, and also to the lineage. What is the difference to um, I mean, if you, if you hear about this, you will think, OK, that sounds like a normal uh, log analytics. What is the difference? The difference is the detail and the way the API is built. Um, with the normal uh, logs, you cannot go so deep into details. And the scanner API is actually scanning what is going on in your tenant and is showing you the result or less from the other way around than you would do with a normal API call. Um, the Scanner API, in fact, is also not one API, like we know, for example, from the uh, REST API, where you call, for example, the log analytics. Um, the Scanner API is a set of four APIs. We will come to them in detail. I will just list them at the beginning. So it's the four APIs, get modified workspaces, workspace, get info, scan status, and 
scan result. As you might realize already from the names, um, you can think how the procedure is working. But as I said, we will show this, or I will show this uh, in a couple of minutes. What is a, another um, speciality about the scanner API is it's an asynchronous API. Um, usually, the, most of the other APIs are synchronous, and the scanner API is asynchronous. Um, what I will explain in the next slide, but that's the main reason why we need four API calls um, and not just one. But if I tell you uh, the Power BI, the Scanner API is a synchronous API, you also should, uh, or I think I also have to explain what is a synchronous API. Um, so in general, how do, does a, a normal REST API or a synchronous API work? Let's take our setup that we have our notebook, we have the REST API service, and in the background, we have the Power BI service where our reports um, are normally working. And what happens now when you call a REST API uh, with your favorite tool or PowerShell um, is you usually send a request, most likely a GET or a POST request to the REST API. The REST API will then internally uh, get some data from Power BI, will either calculate something or you trigger a refresh or whatever you do. Um, this is kind of a black box from the outside because we don't really know what is going on. But most likely, Power BI is uh, giving a, a reply to the REST API. And at the end, you will get a result. So either it's a JSON file. For example, if you take our log analytics, you will in return get a JSON um, with all the information. Or for example, if you trigger a refresh on the Power BI service, um, you will get a status, for example, that the refresh is triggered uh, or something similar. Um, let's take a look at the specific example. Um, as I said, we will take a look, or I will take a look at the um, log API. What's happening here is at the beginning, uh, we start an API call. Um, this is a little, uh, a little bit the short version. So the, actually, the, the real call, uh, the Power BI pros might have realized is a little longer. You have my org admin and so, and so on, and the version. But just to uh, understand how it works, I, I shortened the URL a little bit. So with our client, we um, start the API call with a get. Um, this is going to the REST API. The REST API is connecting in the background to the Power BI service. Power BI service is calculating and returning the logs. And the REST API service is then returning a JSON. The important thing here is that exactly this left part, I start on my notebook the call, and I get a JSON back, or I get a status, a reply back. This is usually instantly. So I start the call, and more or less immediately, I will uh, get back um, either a file or uh, a status or something similar. That is the classical, the, the synchronous API uh, call. Now, what is different with the, AP, with the uh, scanner API? Um, here we have an asynchronous API call, and this works a little bit different in detail. So we have the same setup. We start again with our notebook. We start with the REST API call uh, workspace get info. The workspace get info is the call that starts the scan. So our REST API um, will internally start the scan of the um, Power BI tenant and now pay attention for the animation. <laughs> then the scan will start internally. And the difference is now my reply. I will not get my data immediately. I will just get back a status at the beginning, at the initial call. The status is always not started. And in addition, I get a scan API. So this scan that is working in the background, this scan here gets an ID, the scan ID. And now the scan is working in the background. So I don't get immediately uh, my result. I just started a scan on the service, and then I have to wait. Um, what I can do now, after a while, I can check the status of my API call uh, or of the scan. Um, I will not show this in detail. It will look a little bit um, like this, this first area. I will uh, start the 
the status uh, call, the REST API will just return a status. So the, to check the status, you can uh, imagine like this part. And once the scan is finished, I can uh, I will uh, in return get a status that says successful uh, plus my scan API uh, scan ID. And when this happened, I want to get uh, my data from the Power BI service. For this, there is the third API call, and this works now again same way. So I use the call workspace scan result. Of course, I have to add my scan ID because uh, there might be another scan going on at the same time. And in this case, um, the scan is already finished, so the results are available, and the REST API is returning the JSON to me with all of the data. Now, this has a few advantages. Uh, first of all, the scan um, can take a little time. Um, Power BI has better probabilities or better capabilities to provide the scan because it's not in a hurry like when you have a synchronous uh, API call. Um, the service has to calculate uh, the results and return them immediately. It's, I'm kind of live waiting for the, for the result. So I'm in front of my screen or I uh, have an open API call and I expect a result. With an um, asynchronous API call, I have uh, the advantage that um, I can just wait um, until the scan is finished. Power BI can, can take a little time more. Um, and it can go a lot deeper into details than it would with a normal synchronous API call. The disadvantage is I have four calls instead of one. Um, so it takes a little longer for me as a user and this struggle will be real when I uh, want to implement this in a company environment. Now, for the demo case, you will see it's kind of easy, but uh, to really loop over an API call until the result is uh, succeeded, this takes a little more effort um, than just calling an API and I have the, the result immediately. All right. As I said, this allows to um, to perform a lot bigger scan in the background than I would with it would with a normal um, API call, and uh, as a as a matter of fact, I can get a lot more details compared to a normal API call. Um, another advantage is it supports incremental scan. So if I start a scan, I can, uh, for example, say, okay, my my last scan was uh, two days ago. So as a, an additional argument to the API call, I can uh, add the date, and then the API will return all of the data since the last uh, call two days ago. So this means I have to download a lot less uh, data, and also the Power BI service is less busy uh, because it uh, only has to generate the data from the last two days. And Another update that we had, I think, a year ago, it was like September last year, is that the Scanner API also supports a read-only service principle. Um, so you don't need a, a private account or a service account with a full admin role. You just need a service principle, um, an Azure app, and then um, all you have to do is uh, use the service principle to get the data. So your IT doesn't have to grant you full permission on the whole tenant. You can just use this uh, service principle to download the data. Now, let's go to the four steps of the Scanner API. How do you use that? Um, the first one is you list the workspaces that you want to scan. Then, of course, you start the scan. Then you check the status of the currently ongoing scan, scan not scan. And once the scan is finished, you can download the result. How do the API calls look like? The first one um, is get modified workspaces. And the result is just a list of all the workspaces in your organization. So you will receive a huge list with all workspace IDs. Um, if I want then to initiate a scan, I mean, obviously this, uh, this part is optional. You don't have to first call and get a list of all of your workspaces. But you need for the next um, step to start the scan, you need the IDs of the workspaces you want to include in your scan. So the next API call would be the workspace info. 
And this initiates the scan of your met metadata. So this uh, actually is the, the start of the uh, scanner API. Uh, there is one limitation. And this is per call, you're limited to 100 workspaces. Um, this means if you have, uh, yeah, usually most organizations have more than 100 uh, workspaces. Uh, I don't have this in my case with my uh, demo tenant. But in a, in a normal environment, you would have to loop and uh, through the workspaces and create chunks of 100 workspaces and then call the scan or initiate the scan multiple times. And afterwards, you have to combine all of the results uh, to get a complete analytics. Um, if you call the API, it will also return a scan ID. And this scan ID is the unique ID for your scan. Uh, with this, you, you should save this ID somewhere because um, this ID you will need later to check the status of the, of the current scan and also to download the results. Where we come to the next point, I can uh, check the status of my uh, current scan. And as we see in the um, API call, we have here as an argument the scan ID. Um, I, let's go one back. I didn't mention, but uh, this here was a post call. So you need a body. And in the body, you list the 100 workspaces. Um, in the, if you check the status, you just have to add a scan ID. And after you added the scan ID, um, you will get a reply. And the reply is either that the scan is still ongoing, um, probably that it failed, although this uh, never happened to me. But it might be possible, or that the scan is successful. And once the scan is successful, you can download the results with this get scan results um, call. And the get scan results call um, also needs the scan ID. And with this, I can download the JSON with all of my data. All right, these are the four steps. This is like the framework for our scanner API. Now it's demo time. I will show you the API calls uh, with PowerShell. So I created, I hope I have it here. Yes. I created um, a small script. First step, this is now only because of PowerShell. I have to log into my Power BI uh, account. I will do it with my uh, user uh, because it's a demo case. But in general, of course, you should not do that with your um, personal user. You should log in with your service principal. And then uh, that's the normal login. Or in the API calls, you have to add a client ID or secret or some kind of uh, authentication with a certificate. This is the standard method um, to just uh, access the, AP, uh, the API. Um, the second call was the modified workspace. This uh, just returns a complete list of the workspace ID. Um, this is optional, but uh, I will do it now. The URL is uh, the one mentioned here. It's, again, a get method. And in my case, to make it a little bit more readable, I will convert into a table from JSON. The actual result is a JSON. But as I mentioned, to make it more readable, I will convert it from JSON to a table. If we um, do this API call, we get here a list. This list is now the, um, the list of all the workspaces in my tenant. And this can be the base for the next API call. The next is the call to really scan my, uh, to initiate the scan of my tenant. And as I mentioned, it's a post call. So we need a, a body, and the body is also in uh, JSON format. We just have a node workspaces, and then we just have to separate all of our workspaces that we want to scan uh, in quotes and with a comma. I just took three now that uh, we don't have to wait too long. If you take a few workspaces, if you take this up to 100 workspaces, you have to, of course, as mentioned, you have to wait a little bit. Um, it can take a, a little time. Um, if I do it now with only three, we will have the result more or less instantaneously. Um, as mentioned, it's a post uh, call, the third one. And so I have to add this body, and I will convert it again from JSON. Let's execute that one. And then we get here our ID. This is now the ID of our scan. In the background, the scan started. 
But at, as it was the uh, call to start the scan, I will always receive the start status not started. It did not start, but at the same time, when I call this uh, API, um, it will start in the background. Let's hope it's finished already. I think it should with only three, work, three workspaces. We will copy this ID. Um, we will add it to our next call. The next one is to check the status. Um, uh, here I add a scan ID, that's the variable I just entered, and we convert it again to JSON. Let's execute that. And now we see down here our status is succeeded. What means our scan is finished and our results are ready to download. And this we will do with the last call. Let's replace here the ID with our uh, idea of the current scan. Um, this is again a, a get method, so we don't have to add anybody. We will execute this, and now we see the result of our scan. This is the JSON um, for my three workspaces, what happened here. So in the JSON, we, we realize a few email addresses. We e uh, realize a lot of IDs um, there are, but um, we will go into details in a minute. Um, this, in general, is how you would call the, the four APIs. So it's really, at the beginning, of course, you have to log in somehow. Um, you have to list all of your workspaces. You have to initiate a scan with the workspaces you want in chunks of 100. So if you have more than 100 workspaces, you have to break it down in multiple scans. and. You can check the st uh, status of the scan, and once the scan is finished, you can download the result with the last API call. All right. That's how you use the scanner API. Uh, in general, if there are any questions, just uh, drop them in the, in the box. Just ask. Um, otherwise, I will just continue. Um, that is how you do it in general to, to do a simple call of the scanner API. But we all have the challenge, how do you do this in a real environment, in a, in a productive environment? And I mean, it's not so easy. You either have to uh, program that, you have to write a service or a script or use integration services or whatever. You need some kind of a workflow to uh, handle this scanner API, these different calls that you loop, that you check, is my scan ready to download the files and save them somewhere that you um, afterwards can analyze them. And um, here, I will give you one example. And from my, I mean, I did some research on the Scanner API. I find it the easiest way, and it works pretty uh, solid and, and very stable. Um, first of all, there are a few prerequisites. So if you do this in a uh, business environment, you first of all need a service principle. I would never do that with a with a full administrator of the Power BI tenant. Um, there is the pos if there is the possibility to use a read only service principle. Um, for this, you have to um, activate a setting in the Power BI admin portal, and this is the read only um, API for service principle. I can show this. Um, in my tenant, that's the wrong Dennis, window. just before you do, we do have a question that comes in yeah, from sure. Abdul. So I'll just put this onto the screen. Um, and so Abdul asks, um, how do we interpret the result? Um, you can you can create a Power BI report. Um, that's, that's most likely when you're in Power BI the way to go to analyze uh, things. And there are also some templates. So there are template files that um, you can just use this, uh, the result of your scan and uh, start immediately. Um, I will show you a solution in a minute, actually after this or the next slide. Um, and then, then you, I think it's a little bit clearer once you see this. Excellent. Thank you very much. Does that work? It does. It does. That's perfect. Thank you. All right. Then let's see where my window has gone looks like here so if we go to our tenant and we go to the admin portal there are a few settings the first one um, as i said is the allow service principles to use api um, 
here we define that service principles are allowed in general to use the API. This is a setting that uh, in general would not be enabled. But I would, um, it's also recommended, I would limit this to a specific security group in my tenant, in my demo case of my, my blog. It's a security group uh, called service, uh, PPI service principle. And this group is allowed to uh, use the API. And the second thing we have, what we have to do even before or in general, is we have to enable the um, detailed metadata. If we don't do that, um, I mean, in the API, you will also not get a result. You can also then uh, select if you want stacks and uh, mashup expressions in. So you can quite tweak the, the API, what can be included or what not. But all of this um, you can show in the, uh, you, have, you have to set up in the admin portal. So this is the, the first um, thing you have to do before you create the um, service principle. You have to activate the, the features in the, in the portal. The second one is you have to create an Azure uh, Active Directory app. This app is the one that will uh, later connect. It's the service principle. And third of all, you have to create a security group, add the uh, app, and this security group you will use in the settings in the Power BI tenant um, if you uh, limit uh, these settings to a specific group. But I would in general do this. If you don't do that, it means every user, if you say the entire organization, it would mean that every user could um, use the scanner API, what you also don't really want. Then. The second thing is how do you set up the workflow? Um, and here there's one solution that works like a charm really. And uh, this is my recommendation. That is the Power Automate solution from Power BI Tips, especially from Tommy Puglia. Um, it's available on GitHub for free. And you create it in Power Automate. It's more or less only an import. You have to change a few parameters, but I will show this also in a minute. And afterwards, the Power Automate is doing all of this work with the four APIs. It's um, every day, it's uh, loading the data, it's starting the scan, it's splitting all of your workspace into chunks of 100. It's checking, uh, looping and checking uh, if the scan is still in progress or if it's finished. And after it's finished, it's downloaded, lo downloading uh, the files directly to your SharePoint. It also includes the Power BI template. And this template you can use to analyze uh, the results directly from your SharePoint. It's available under this address. Otherwise, if you Google, you find it quite fast. If you Google for Power BI tips and a scanner API or Tommy Puglia and scanner API, um, you will find it immediately. So let's go again to our demo case. Where is my browser again? Here it is. So um, first of all, uh, I will go to the Azure portal. We go to our active directory. I mean, I will not create it now, but I just quickly want to show you what we need exactly. Um, we need two things. First of all, we need the app registration. If you don't have an app registration, you can just create a new app. Then it's more or less one click. You have to give it a name. Um, you have to say where the uh, API is working. It should usually only be single tenant, single tenant or this tenant. And then you register. That's all you have to do. In um, my case, I did this here with a scanner API. I just uh, registered it. Afterwards, probably you have to fix the API permissions. So you just need read permissions on the tenant and Microsoft uh, Graph read permissions and no admin consent. And um, then it should work. Then in the, this is the first thing you need to do is the app it, uh, itself. Of course, the app then also needs a certificate and a secret um, to be able to access it, or either you do a certificate or you need it, uh, you do it with the client secret and the value. Um, there are whole articles on doing this, so I will not go into detail. The second thing you have to do is to uh, create a security group. 
In my case, it was the Power BI service principle. And in this security group, you just add your, um, your app. I think I showed you the wrong one. It's the, must be the service principle app. And then you um, add this security group to the settings I just mentioned in the Power BI 10. That's the setup for your um, service principle. The second thing you should do then, or if you work with a, um, with a solution from uh, our friends from Power BI Tips, is you go to the GitHub repository. Um, you have here two folders. I mean, they have a lot of uh, instruction here how you should do that. Just want to mention you can go to the Power Automate folder. You have two zip files. These two you need to import into Power Automate. And in the Power BI folder, you have a template file, a PBIT that is then analyzing your result. If you go to um, Power Automate, there are two flows. These are the tools that you can uh, import. One, the first one here, the scanner refresh, is just triggering the refresh. And the second one is doing the work. If we go in detail, um, we have to change a few of the parameters. And it always says where you should do it. So the do not edit. As the name says, you don't edit them. Uh, the only things you have to change are the ones that say insert here. This, for example, is then your tenant ID, client ID, and secret for your um, app registration, um, library location. This is then for your SharePoint. Um, so I can also, for example, use this and show you the SharePoint. Um, here, it's automatically creating uh, the folders and downloading the files. So if I go to PBI admin and files, these here are my finished uh, scan results. So you see for every day, it's creating one JSON. If we go to the JSON, uh, this is uh, a very, very long JSON with all of the details. And I mean, I have a test tenant where it's only me and one or two colleagues. Um, if you do this in a productive environment, they are really, really detailed. Um, that's all you have to do. You just have to add a few of the, uh, change a few of the parameters only in this upper block here. And that's all uh, you have to change yourself. All of the other logic is handled automatically. So you have down here multiple procedures. It's looping over your workspaces. It's checking. It's saving everything. It's downloading it automatically um, to your SharePoint, and you don't have to care anymore. I set it up, I think, in May or something like this. And since then, it's really working like a charm. Um, if you go back, I mean, you see it's every day it's running. In my case, it's only 14 to 16 seconds. And uh, it's daily working. I never had to change it. It never threw an error. It worked since May. I never had to change it. Uh, last time I modified 1st of July, created 30th of June. I, added was a, I did an adoption afterwards. So that's all you have to change. Pragati, I think you're muted. I am muted. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> so we have just so we have just got a question. Uh, so Pedro sure. is asking, like, do we need more than a pro license to do all this? No, that's the best thing. You don't need any license. It's totally free. Okay. This is a hint for my summary slide at the end. <laughs> okay, cool. But no, no, it's, that's really cool. It, it works without premium. It works uh, without any license. You can do as many scans as you want. It's uh, totally free. Okay. 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 Thanks. Uh, I guess I guess that answers Federal's question. So sorry, you were saying something else. Uh, do we? No, you, you don't need a, a pro license. Mm -hmm. uh, not more than a pro license. Um, I don't even think you need a pro license. You just need uh, access to your tenant admin at uh, the, the um, admin API REST uh, access, and that's all. Okay. Okay. And Thank also you. to set it up here. Uh, you're welcome, Pedro. If you have more questions, just just ask if this didn't answer it. Thanks. Thanks for now, um, Dennis. And otherwise, also this uh, this workflow uh, from Tommy Puglia is totally free. You just download the two uh, Power Automate scripts, change your parameters, and if you want to also do your analysis, use the template uh, of them. You can use the same, um, and this will actually give you uh, everything you need. That's the reason um, I mentioned 
I mentioned in the last slide that it's my recommendation. Actually, at the beginning, I tried to set it up myself and I failed successfully. So it's really a pain, but to be fair, I'm doing Power BI stuff. I'm not a programmer. So I think if you're good in this area, you can also do it yourself. For me, the easiest way and the most comfortable one was uh, really this Power App. And uh, you set it up once and then you really forget it. Or that's at least how I did. Now, what uh, once it's set up, we have it in our SharePoint. We take our template and we connect it to our um, to our data in the SharePoint folder. Now, how does the result look like? We talked so much, or I talked so much about the Power BI API, the Scanner API, but what do I really get out of it? So I have, uh, as I said, it's anyway my test tenant. I just have a handful of uh, workspaces or two hands maybe. And then I have here my in my monitoring workspace, I have the Scanner API report. It has a few pages. We will now go through the report itself. Let's use full screen. And I will try to explain what we see. So the first page, the summary page, gives us, as we said, a summary. Uh, we see first our workspaces, and we see the reports in the workspace. Um, let's collapse all. We see the creation date, in this case, of the workspace, but also of the reports if we um, expand it. We see the amount of table, the amount of data sources, and the users in this database. On the side, we see um, who configured uh, the users that configured data sets. We see the data sets per workspace, uh, the data source types, and we see also the amount of data sets, how it's growing per month. And of course, as you know, in Power BI, everything is interactive. So if, for example, I want to only see the data sets I configured, I can just uh, select myself. And the, uh, all the other tables uh, will, um, um, will filter to my selection. If, for example, I only want to see my uh, data sets that are using SQL, I can do the same, the same for files, folders, websites and so on, but we will come to this later. And even more important, I also can use drill ups and drill downs. So if I'm not really interested into workspaces, um, I can just drill up or I can drill down to a specific workspace. For example, if I just want to see more details to my monitoring workspace, I could now see all the details. Uh, in my case, of course, I only have two reports. That's not very, that's not very, not very exciting. But if you take your real world examples, you can imagine a workspace with uh, tons of reports. Um, you can see which ones were created. So you can um, filter by the creation date. This is a really great idea, for example, if you just want to get an idea about your tenant. So now I just filter down on all of my reports. And I've seen yesterday someone created imported report 3, 19th of October. Uh, maybe I should deactivate the interactive mode. And if I want to know more about that, <laughs> configured by blank, that was maybe not the best example, but it's in workspace manual, so I can guess who it was. Um, let's check another example. Um, yeah, the last one also created yesterday, 19th of October. Now I see here this was Manuel Werner. Um, so I can really go through my settings and see when new reports were created, if new workspaces, if I drill up a level, I could see if new workspaces are created. Um, I can really get information without going down to each workspace. We've also seen that this uh, whole thing is uh, interactive. So if we go to, for example, to this report itself, we get here a button for a drill through. Uh, one area I didn't mention was the top here. We see the amount of workspaces, data sets, reports, data flows, data sources, users in the database. So I get a few more details. Um, if I select, for example, a report, I can uh, go to the drill through page and I see more information about this report in detail. So first of all, I see my idea, uh, ID, not, not idea. I see if it's on a dedicated capacity, um, what is the storage mode, um, what is the provider mode, so import mode in this case. 
I see all my tables uh, in this um, report, in this data set. I see who configured this data set. In this case, this was me. On the top here, I see the details, like the ID. I see the, the rights of the uh, each user. Um, I see the data sources. In my case, it's a SharePoint list. And if I mark it, I even see the URL. So in my case, in this report, we knew it's coming from the SharePoint side, Power BI Tenant Administration. This we just know because I showed you the SharePoint uh, folder. But if I didn't know, I can also figure it out by just clicking uh, or doing a drill through to this report. What is now even more crazy um, is I can select one of the tables, for example, and I see the M query of the specific table. Uh, so the scanner API is really, really detailed. I see the M query of each uh, table. I can exactly realize what uh, what is going on. So in my workspaces, it looks a little bit more complicated. Um, but I can get an idea right from the logs what is uh, going on, what, what users are doing in their reports. The second thing I have are here, uh, I see my calculated columns, my columns, and my measures. And as you might guess already, I also see the measures definition. So if I click on a measure here, I see the other uh, bar, uh, the other box here. I see the DAX formula for the specific measure. So I don't only have um, the M code for the query. I really see what I'm doing exactly in, the, in DAX. And this, this gives me huge opportunities. For example, if in my company we define a specific measure in a specific way, I can just use my scanner API and see if all of my users in my whole tenant are using the same definition for a number of columns. That's maybe not the best uh, example, but I guess if we have you know like a complicated uh, calculation of a specific uh, measure, I can see it right in my scanner API. Um, of course, uh, columns, I don't see uh, any details as there are no uh, formulas. But for example, if I have a calculated column, I also can see the formula here. Um, this is the icon. So you have here base for 64 um, calculation. Uh, but I see also the calculation of the calculated columns. On the side, we also have a filter panel. So we can uh, also use this to, to filter for um, different kind of areas, for example, of the load or the, of the stage, I could uh, filter. Um, I could really filter on uh, other reports or workspaces. Um, this is uh, the, the context from the drill through, or we have other filters on top. Um, and we're just at the first side. So let's go to the next page. This is the data set side. Here we have a few more details for our data sets. For example, we also see the number of reports uh, based for each data set. And like this, I can easily figure out um, which uh, reports are using a data set. Let's guess, or let's say we want to change uh, a data set. I want to remove a column. Uh, I, have to, I want to know um, which reports are affected by that. Let's go to the dashboard in a day final report. Um, if I would open that, uh, sorry, data set, I would see um, which reports are using it. Now the question is, why does it say two? And we only see one. Let's forget about this. Um, yeah. I know, sorry, it's just showing the, the details here, the reports with uh, more than one data set. It's the other way around. My bad. Um, let's do it this way. If we want to see the uh, data sets that have multiple reports. We can also see that here in this visual. Um, for example, I can see my, um, I don't know, my right back data set um, is uh, used by three data sets, uh, three reports, sorry. And here I can um, say that, uh, see that. Um, in general, when reports have the same name, this is here in the, in the template from Power BI tips, they will be summarized. So this was also the error um, in the report I wanted to show before. 
In my case, there are, is one report called Overview Management that is using the data set right back, and I have two reports called right back. So in this area, I don't see that, uh, but we can easily change that in the Power BI file itself, that it's not summarizing, that it's uh, showing us all of the details. All right, let's go to the next tab. This is the tables. Um, if I change here, or if, yeah, now first of all, I see here all the details of a specific table. Um, let's collapse all of that again. Um, let's collapse all. So if we're here and we want to see specific details for a specific table, um, I can just open here and I see all of my columns. I see the details, like what data type is it? And um, I have the same uh, thing, the same information in the other tabs. For example, I can say which data sets are either using this table. In my case, I highlighted now the fact online sales 2021. And I see here I have uh, multiple data sets that have a table named like that. Um, I see the entities, and more important, I also see if there are different um, data formats. For example, if I mark uh, my comment uh, column, it's always a string. But it might be interesting if I have a data set that is used in multiple reports and it has different uh, data formats. Um, I can also change this. We have a, a small filter box on top. Instead of all, I could just, for example, filter for measures instead of columns. And now I would see the same for my measures. So in my case, I have a measure called amount rows in my effect online sales 2021. And again, down here, I see the tax um, measure. I see where it's used and I see the, um, yeah, the entities where it's used. So I can do really nice analysis in this case. Um, I can do it by measure, I can do it by column, by calculated column. I can uh, filter more on this context. I could also use, use drill throughs. And now one of my favorite tabs is the data source. Um, I can also turn the analysis of my uh, tenant around and maybe I want to see which data sources are used in my whole tenant over all workspaces. For example, as a company, I might want to avoid that people are loading data from a web source. So I um, see it summarized here in, the, in this field. I can just filter for uh, web sources. And down here, I see all the um, URLs where data is taken from. So some are from Log Analytics, Power BI. Some reports go to the uh, web service of the World Bank. Some go to SharePoint. I see all the URLs here. And I don't have to do anything except for clicking web. And I see all of my web URLs that the whole tenant is accessing. This I find really crazy. Um, I had once a customer case where we wanted to find out uh, which uh, URLs are used. And this was kind of a pain. And here it's so easy. The same with, for example, SQL so uh, sources. In, in my case, I just see a few local ones, uh, dot and localhost. Um, I see a few Azure ones, uh, My Power BI, MS, and so on. Um, but this also gives me a nice um, insight, for example, as a company. Maybe I want to make sure that all of my database are pointing to the productive environment and not to the test. You know how it is, you deploy a report, maybe you forget to change the data source from your test environment to the production, and you never realize. As an admin, you have an easy way with the scanner API. You just scan for a SQL server, and uh, you see all of the connections for all the different um, databases. You also see it for gateways. Um, you have so many possibilities. Same for files. Uh, what are people really loading? I see people are loading uh, from their local um, folders. Um, so. If I don't want that, I see exactly uh, where this is happening. I also could filter for a specific user um, and make it quite easy to contact them. Of course, as always, I can do it the other way around. I can, for example, filter for um, a report, like my, like my activity log. And then I see all of my sources here. Um, if this didn't work well, I can, yeah, if I highlight it, now it works. Um, now I see all of my sources for the specific 
um, data source. I could also do it by data flows. This is also possible. And last but not least, after we come to uh, before we come to the summary, we can do the whole thing by user. For example, if uh, I want to see what Frodo is doing, uh, he is involved in these data sets. Um, he is involved in these databases and in these data set names. Or I do it the other way around. There is a data set that is causing trouble. For example, here my write back, who is responsible. Um, and then I should, yeah, I see it here. All right. This is more or less a summary of what Power BI, this is the template of Power BI tips. Um, what they are showing us, there is a last page of details. This is mainly to give us IDs. So for example, of course, it's also interactive. I could uh, mark a specific workspace. Then I see all the reports in this workspace. Um, I see data flows in this workspace. And I see the users interacting in this uh, workspace. I can also do it the other way around. I want to see what uh, this user is doing. And then I see here all the reports and workspaces where this user was involved. Maybe this makes it a little more yeah, clear. Um, but this is mainly for the IDs uh, to copy or, or work with them. Um, yeah, but that's the, the report of Power BI tips. Um, once you open this, of course, you have a PBIX file. Uh, you point it to your SharePoint. And then you can do so many more things. Um, this is just an idea of what is possible, but you're the master of the data. You have all of the data of your um, scanner API result. You have all of the result in your Power BI file already in a proper data model. Um, and then you can easily analyze that. This was my recommendation. This now was the demo of the scanner API. And now let's come to the advantages. As we already said, uh, we have um, the possibility to analyze so many activities in our talent, all in detail. I mean, I really see the definition of tables. I see the M queries of each table. Um, I see this all over, um, all over my workspaces. I can filter for workspaces or not. I see DAX measures. Um, I have so many possibilities. It's a very, very granular level. Uh, really the lowest level possible. And what uh, we mentioned after the question, there are no additional fees. All of that is included. There is no premium needed. I can just do all of that out of the box. And when you think about it, it's a little bit a data catalog, or uh, I wouldn't say it's like purview, but you get a data catalog for free about your whole tenant. And, um, with the with the package with the power automate uh, instructions of PBI tips, um, you can really set this up in in no time. Take a few hours, maybe if you if you didn't do any of it, and within one day uh, it's all set up and ready to go. More advantages, yeah, I have a few examples that we could use. I think a few of them I showed, so you can uh, exactly you can check if there were new reports created in the last days, weeks, month however you want to see that. So you, you really get an idea about your uh, the activities in your tenant. Um, you can, uh, what I showed, you can check the sources uh, that are used, uh, which web services URLs, which uh, folders are used. Um, you can see if all your databases are connected properly to your productive environments, or maybe someone forgot and the database is still pointing to, to dev. Um, Exactly, you can check if specific formulas and measures are set correctly. And you can check also how many reports uh, about the lineage. You can check how many reports, for example, are connected to a specific data set. This, of course, you can also do with a lineage uh, feature within Power BI itself. But it's also available here in the Scanner API. You have really a lot of possibility uh, for analysis. All right, this actually was. Uh, already my presentation. I think from the time we're also good. Are there any more questions?
Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dennis. An absolutely amazing um, presentation there. A lot of info for our audience as well. Uh, we do have one question coming in from sure. Pedro at the moment. And Pedro asks, um, you can also have the usage metrics in this report, right? Uh, I'm asking this because you have all the info here, except, of course, the usage metrics that we can connect to later. Um, yeah, it's actually connected already. So if we um, go back to our um, data set here, we shouldn't see it in the in the workspaces. But if you drill down to the uh, wait a second, where am I? I'm confused. Where are my tabs? Full screen. Yes, I'm on the summary table. Um, if you now drill down to the reports, um, you should see the usage metric somewhere. Otherwise, latest that the data sets, I should be able to see them. Let's do the same here. Let's drill down. And here we have the Microsoft 365 usage analytics. So this is already the, the usage metrics data set. Is it? No, here's the usage metrics data set. There are two, one for reports and one for the dashboards. So I think this should be the two. Uh, this is the usage metrics, and here we have the second. This should be the two data sets. So it's uh, automatically included already, um, as they are just normal uh, data sets in the tenant. Excellent. Thank you very much. And then we just have a bit of feedback coming in as well. Uh, so, Bhagati, sure. would you like to um, get up onto the screen? Yeah, I think Christine, Christine just mentioned like, wow, this is awesome. Thank you for the presentation. Thank Excited you. to mess around with this API. <laughs> I'm happy you liked it. Yes, and give it a try. It's really a lot of fun if you do that. Also, once you start it, you really get addicted. So it's like, ah, what, what else can I analyze? And you see more and more. Fantastic. And it looks like that's it. that's all from everybody today. Um, like I say, really, really a riveting session as well. Uh, we do have a little bit of feedback coming in from Elvis as well on YouTube. Um, we just wait for that to populate into our stream yard as well. Uh, and then I'll show yeah. that to you on the I, screen. Otherwise, I have one mention. Yes, please. Ah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, mention is that uh, you can also, of course, combine it with other things. So we have now the REST API that you can execute DAX uh, commands. So all of these insights, for example, um, if you're using a productive or a test uh, SQL server, you can, uh, for example, check that with DAX queries. So you could create a table and uh, then with Power Automate evaluate the, this table and then use it if at one point a dev uh, server pops up, it can send you an email or a Teams message or something like this. So that's just the start. Uh, you can do a lot more once it's um, set up. Excellent. This is just the beginning, Dennis, and we expect to have you back with us in the future to go through um, some more enhancements that you've made as well. <laughs> I would be happy to come back. Sure. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Yeah, I think so definitely. Yeah, I think definitely the session was so amazing, Dennis, and and thanks for presenting this because yeah, I have learned something really new today because especially when you work for the enterprise level solutions, you really need these things in place to understand the usage. So yeah, thank you, thank you so much for presenting for our user group. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Um, if there are any more questions that are coming in, we are out of time for this evening, uh, but please do feel free to either post them into our community, um, contact any of us directly, um, and we'll be happy to answer. Uh, and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Dennis, thank you very much once again. Um, and just to finish up, um, Pragati, it's been another fantastic opportunity to come together. Thank you. Um, thank you to everybody in the community for joining us today. Um, and obviously, as always, um, this UK user group session has been brought to you in association with Pomerol Partners. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care.